Hello everyone, what's up? Well, today's video, we're going to do a new Mythbuster video. Yay, it's been a while since we last done a Mythbuster video. And this is going to be like a wrap-up of the uh, Asian Phosphoryl species. I'm pretty much done all of them except for the O. orthovallis, which I'm going to make on Tarantula and Mythbuster video 33. And it's going to be very similar to the Haplopalma genus, so it's going to be kind of a refresher video for you all to enjoy. So before I go on to this Mythbuster video concerning uh, the Kilobrachys and the Selenocosmia species, um, we got some updates on the teas, which I'm going to be making a separate video on. Uh, someone has requested me to show the Eat Udaman. We haven't seen Esmeralda in a while, so I'm going to be posting a video on her. And as well, as I got a new Pokemult. So it's actually one of my all-time favorite ones, so I'll do an exclusive video for her so you guys can enjoy. So. As I said, today we're going to work on the Selenocosmia and the Kiyobaki species. So, I have it on my board to discuss of which uh, species we're going to, to discuss. We're going to discuss mainly uh, these two, since these are the most popular, but I'll show you on Tarantula Canada site where this will apply to. It applies to the Diascolus, the um, Huahini, species Penang, and then this also applies the Cormiosimus, like the Brachyformosa, the Hagi, and then also the Selenocosmia species, not, con not considering the Australian ones that I did on that this or video 17 but let's go down all the way <laughs> there we go yeah it also covers these ones Arnsty, Crassy Peeps well that's the Australian one Dichromata, I'd love to get that one that one's a really nice specimen uh, Ephra, Pirbumi and the Selenocosmia species. Believe it or not, that one is actually Eva, the one in my collection. So, without further ado, let's get started. So, the common name of the Culobrachys guanacinensis, or siensis, is called the Chinese fawn, and the Indian violet is the Culobrachys frumbriatus. So, what I like about these common names is that it's pretty universal and one is assigned to each of them so I like that. So these are the Latin names and this is how you pronounce them. Kilobrachys guanciensis and Frimbriatus. So that's uh, pretty. This is actually kind of a little complicated because of the kilo. People like to call it Chilo, Trilo, Brachys, it's actually a Kilo, and then this is kind of actually hard to pronounce, but it's Guanacinensis because the X is silent, so that's how you say it. Okay, so availability. Well, you're going to find these readily available on online dealers, so uh, people I recommend, uh, as always, um, Ken the Bug Guy and uh, Swiss Inverts, or you can check the classified uh, ads on the popular Arachnoborts forum. If you're in Canada, you know, Martin Amanda from Tarantula Canada has my highest recommendations. And you can try out uh, Dave Avery's Exotics. I haven't bought anything from him because shipping is just like 50 bucks, so it's out of my price range for a shipment. Okay, so now about the size, the mature females, the mature males, and the growth rate. Okay, so, as you know, Selenocosmia and Kilobrachys are an old world terrestrial species. Kilobrachys ranging uh, in particularly Asia, you know, like China, Thailand, and Malaysia. And Selenocosmia is a very diverse species that goes from as far west as South 
America, in French Guiana, where the Estai Carmada lives. And you go all the way far east to Australia, where the S. Crassipeeps originates from. So we don't know if the S. Crassipeeps is really a Selenocosmia. It could be a Fulvia species. Okay, so the mature males and the mature females. Well, of course, the mature males and the females are going to look aesthetically different. Uh, the mature males are going to be a lot smaller bodied. They're going to be more leggy than the mature females, but in color-wise they look very identical to each other. I have not seen a mature male uh, Chilobrachys or Selenocosma before, uh, but I I'm going to assume that they don't have tibial hooks, but they do have your bubbles pedipalps. If someone wants to chime me in on whether or not they have tibial hooks, please do, because uh, I like to know about this one. As far as the size is concerned, they're actually pretty sizable for a Kilobacchia species. So, <clears throat> I'll show you two specimens. I'm probably not sure going to take this one out. This is Eva, who is a Selenocosmia species. We don't know which species or genus this falls into. Um, as you can see, she's under there, but I'm probably not going to take her out. I'm not sure if she wants... Uh, I don't think so. Okay, well, yeah, you can tell right away that these are super defensive species, so she's not going to come out. But I do have videos of her, especially in the recent feeding video where she was out in the open, so you probably got a good look at her. So now we're going to compare it to the uh, Chilobrachys guanaciensis, which is my Chinese fawn. So if you remember Julin, I think I got her in early 2010 as a inch spiraling. I got her for around $15. So she was an inch back then. Now take a good look at her size now. I would say she's good three, three and a half inches. Definitely not the most colorful of the Kilobrachys, but in its own right it's pretty unique. Uh, the Frimbriatus is actually one of the more colorful ones. So I'll give you an example of what a male and female C. Frimbriatus looks like. Excuse the suck. Okay, so let's go back to their website. Kilobrachys. Okay, so here's a Frimbriatus female. Sadly, I don't have one in my collection, which I probably will get in sometime in this future. That's what a female looks like, and this is what a mature male looks like. As you can see, they look exactly identical, except you notice that it's a lot longer legged and smaller body than the mature female. And I believe I do have a picture of a guanacinensis. Uh, that was up around a juvenile. Yeah, they're kind of like a deep uh, chocolate mocha brown color as they get adults. So pretty good and pretty fast too. Oh, I also did forget to mention that uh, they mature out pretty quickly. Uh, the species tend to generally reach sexual maturity around three to four years if uh, fed well. Now let's get on to the cage setup and to see what one looks like. Okay, so now we're going to talk about the cage setup. Okay, so as spiralings they do well in pill jars with a lot of substrate to burrow. Uh, for two and a half, uh, three and a half inch specimens like this one, a big round deli container will do it fine. Um, I probably add a little more substrate I know she's going to need a rehouse very soon, but around that size, I'm probably going to rehouse her in one of those famous six liter shoebox enclosures that I come to know and love. Uh, I recommend Eco Earth or Potting Soil as a recommended substrate. Just like uh, the LP that I have here. 
But what I would do is I probably would amp up the substrate until about halfway full to allow the tarantula to burrow. So I will do a rehouse video of the Ciguanas and Yensis very soon, so you'll have an idea of how fast this one was. I actually did make a rehouse video of this one. You can tell that this was the one that was tapping a lot as it was running, so yeah, it's pretty fast and scary at the same time. All right, now for the care sheet portion of this uh, Mythbuster video. Culebrachis and Selenocosmus species are very easy to keep. I, I personally think that they are much more easier to keep than the Haplopelma genus. Uh, so in terms of uh, humidity and temperature conditions, as far as those are concerned, uh, temperatures, they seem to do very well between 75 to 80 degrees Fahrenheit, which is the optimal temperature conditions for any tarantula to survive well. And humidity, uh, they seem to like it fairly dry, but occasional misting, like once a week, would be more than sufficient for a Culebrachis to survive well. Uh, just keep in mind, since if you do have a spiderling, you might want to keep it slightly moist than your adults, and adults you can offer a water dish. Just because if you order, offer a water dish to a tarantula very small, like a sling, it has a high chance of drowning, and trust me, you do not want that. Now, topic number eight. Are these Hannibal or not? Well, I probably will go against that. These are definitely not teas that I would handle, partly because these are very fast species. They're lightning quick. Uh, these can be very defensive, and some of them can actually be highly aggressive depending on your individual specimen or an individual species. Uh, they also have very potent venom too. Uh, symptoms generally inc include, you know, nausea, uh, severe muscle cramps, intense swelling, maybe even some cold sweats. So it's a pretty... Well, I could say it'll ruin your day if you get bitten by this one. Uh, let's put it that way. I personally have never been bitten by any tarantula in the 16 years that I kept these, and I plan to keep it that way. So definitely uh, not a tarantula that I recommend for a beginner uh, because of, uh, of what I said, because of their highly aggressive nature, and they're just pretty fast. So, On the brighter note, they're really cheap too, so uh, it also it, it makes the species a little bit more attractable. Okay, so as far as breeding is concerned, um, actually I'll just keep it up so you can actually see the specimen while I'm talking. Uh, breeding is fairly easy for this uh, genus, as I've seen on several arachnivore pages. Uh, I don't know how much Achillobrachis guanasiensis exact is, but I probably would assume it'll probably be around 200 to 500 eggs depending on you know the conditions if, if it's the proper humidity if it's a proper temperature and of course her molt cycle uh, the fimbriatus actually gets a pretty large sac too so you know that's pretty good because I find fimbriatus and guanacinensis really attractable for the Kilobrachy species Huahini not very much because of its uh, light brown color but as you can see from my specimen, the camera is really not picking up well. Uh, you can see the front legs have sort of like a brownish black color to them. So it's a pretty fine looking specimen, if I do say so myself. So, and finally to close off my personal recommendations. Do I think this is a species worth getting? Well, I would say yes. This is actually a pretty cool looking specimen. Although the uh, C. frimbriatus is actually the most colorful one, the C. guansanensis is actually one of the larger ones and just as equally as beautiful. Sure, it may not have, you know, the purple legs and the chevron patterns, but it's a definitely great species to consider since it gets pretty large, six to seven inches. You know, you can't complain on a species like this. Also, the S. dichromata, that's a wonderful looking species too with its uh, black body and tan color carapace.
So I hope this video helps you on the Chelobrachis and the Selenocosmus species. So hope you enjoy this uh, awesome Mythbuster video. And the next one will be a old world, no, the new world terrestrial species. I'm thinking of doing the Evova species since a lot of people have seen to put a request on that. Alright guys, so uh, take care and have a nice day.